Adventures in Murfreesboro is produced in cooperation with Murfreesboro City Schools. What's up with you? Uh, hey, I see you've been riding your bike. Uh, do not even talk to me about bikes. <laughs> oh, no, that doesn't sound good. But I see you got your helmet here. Yeah, well, you know what? That is no longer a helmet. I, I think I'm going to turn it into a flower pot, yeah, yeah, or, or a potato chip bowl. Ooh. What a silly thing to say. Why would you say that, Murph? Because I no longer need a helmet. Because? Because, because, uh, because I can't ride my bike! Uh. Oh, Murph, is that all? Oh. That's nothing to worry about. It takes a while to learn a new thing. Well, yeah, you know what? That while is not working for me. Murph, you can do this. Hmm. Murph, you just have to believe in yourself. But I do have an idea of how we can use your helmet. Oh, spaghetti bowl. <laughs> no, Murph. We're going to use it to hold some papers. What kind of papers? Some I can papers. I can papers? Right. Here, oh. let's get a paper and a pencil. Yeah, what are we going to do? I want you to think of some things that you can do now that were hard or scary at one time, and you tell me what they are, and I'll write them down. Okay. Let's see. Well, um, oh, 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 I got one. Okay. I can cut my own carrots now. You know, it used to be hard and my parents would cut my carrots, but I can do it now. That's a good one, Murph. Oh. And, and I can make a basket with a basketball sometimes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I can do all my multiplication tables now. That's great, Murph. See, you can think of lots of things. These are great. Oh. These are all things you can do now, which used to be hard. And I bet you can think of a lot more. Oh, well, thanks, dude. And one day, uh -huh. you're going to be able to say, I can ride my bike, Oh, you too. really think so? I do. Uh -huh. And I know just the people to help you. Really? That's right. Reeves Rogers Elementary has teamed up with St. Mark's United Methodist Church uh -huh. and the Murfreesboro Bike Club to host a bike rodeo. We should go. Oh, yeah, we should check it out. Hey, can yeah. they come, too? Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody, I am so super excited to be here with my brand new friend, Miss Sarah Levin. Hi, Miss Sarah. Hey, Murph. How are you today? Oh, oh, I'm excited. I know there's a lot going on here today. Very cool. Yes, we're having a bike rodeo. A bi who, who's we? Who's the we that's having the bike rodeo? So, St. Mark's United Methodist Church uh -huh. has invited students from Reeves Rogers. Reeves Rogers, awesome. Yay. And then we're part of the Murfreesboro Bike Club. Oh, the Murfreesboro Bike Club. And today we're going to show the students from Reeves Rogers and some of the, the kids from St. Mark's uh -huh. how to properly wear a helmet, Ooh. how to check their bike, check their bike, and how to ride their bike. Oh my goodness, this is exciting because you know what, Miss Sarah, I've been I've been kind of struggling with this. What What's the first thing I should know? I see you've got something in your hand. Here. I do. This is my bicycle helmet, Murph. Ooh. And the most important thing that you can have on your bicycle is your helmet because Ooh. it protects your head in case you fall off. And hey, we don't did want you hear that, job? They want to protect. My head. We don't want to hurt protection. your head. Oh, that's yeah. good. Oh, okay. <laughs> so your helmet would go on like this okay, okay, and okay. straps would buckle under your chin. Oh, yeah. So let me show you how it looks on my head. Okay, so, is, that, is that when you were... Yes, this is my helmet. Okay. And so I pull my ponytail out the back uh -huh. and then I make sure my straps are snug under my chin 
and then I can tighten my helmet to make sure it's down on my head, like, just like this. Oh! So there you go. And, and it fits good like that, and that would protect your head in case you had a little accident. Yes, sir, it sure would. In case I fell off my bike and hit my head on the pavement, or even on grass, it would protect me. Now what is this check your bike stuff? So we have um, bicycles that we're making sure we're doing the ABC check. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's summer, Miss Sarah. What's the ABC stuff? So the ABC check means we're going to check to make sure we have air in our tires. Air in our tires is important, huh? It's very important. Otherwise and the, we would go bloom, bloom, Exactly, bloom. and it would be really hard to pedal. Oh, yeah. So your tire will tell you how much air you should put in your tire. Okay. So we want to make sure our tires are inflated properly. So after you make sure you have air in your tires, the uh, next thing you need to check is your brakes. Why oh, are brakes important? Um, because they make you stop? Yes, so you don't roll out into traffic when you don't need to or to avoid a hazard. A is the air, Correct. B is the brake, and what's C? C is for your crank, and a. your crank is what your pedals are attached to. Oh. So you want to make sure your crank is solid. How, how do we do that? So you, you want to take a hold of your pedals okay. and wiggle them back and wiggle, forth. Wiggle, if they wiggle. wiggle, that's not good. Okay. They want to be solid. Okay, okay, okay. The C also stands for your chain. So chain. you want to make sure your chain doesn't have rust on it. That oh. uh, mommy or daddy can help you put some oil on it so it'll run smoothly over the other C, which is the cog, which cog. is the little silver thing with the pointy things on it, which makes the chain go around, which makes your pedals go around, which makes your wheels go around. Which makes the wheels go around. <laughs> exactly. And that's, yeah. riding a bike makes the world go around. Oh, it's, it's, I just know it's going to be so fun once I learn. I'm so excited that you're here to learn with us today. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us, Miss Sarah. Now, if we wanted to find out more about the Murfreesboro Bike Club, how could we do that? You could go to our website, which is www.mburrowbike.com. Cool. Okay, everybody, check that out. Okay, you ready to go watch and learn, John? Let's go. Yay, okay, let's go. Thank you. Yay. Bye, Miss Sarah. Oh, hey, everybody. Now I'm here with my new friend, Mr. Garrett. Hi, Mr. Garrett. Hello, Murph. Oh, oh, it's exciting, everything going on here today. It is, it's lots of fun. Yeah, and are you with the bike club too? I am, I'm the actually the mountain bike coordinator for the club. Oh, the mountain bike coordinator, oh, I bet that's fun, huh? It's a good time. Yeah, you know, you know, Mr. Garrett, if I were not riding on a mountain, but if I were riding on a road, mm -hmm. I hear there are some hand signals that can help keep you safe in traffic. There are, that helps the cars know what you're planning to do. Oh, can you teach them to us, Mr. Garrett? I sure can. Oh, this is going to be important, so y'all pay attention. Okay, 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 what, what's first? What's, what's, what's first? So the first one, arm out to your side, hand down, close your fist, that means you're stopping. That lets the cars know you're planning to stop. Hand open would be you're slowing, that's more for the other bicyclists you're riding with, not the cars. Arm straight out to your side would be you're turning left. Arm straight up when your hand closed is you're turning right. Oh, John, we need to practice those. We sure do, Murph. Oh, thanks so much, Mr. Garrett, for coming and teaching us all about the hand signals. You're welcome, Murph. Let's be sure to practice those hand signals so we can stay safe on the roads. Yeah. Oh, hey, everybody, I'm here with Mr. Jim, another new friend from the bike club. Hi, Mr. Jim. Good morning. Oh, uh, now, Miss Sarah told us about the A, B's, and C's, and this is a friend of mine's bike. I was wondering if you could show us the A, B, C's. Sure can. The first part of what we're doing is the A, which stands for air. We're going to check the air in these tires. And if you look on the sidewall of the tire, it always has the PSI uh, recommended on there. This one is 40 pounds. We have aired each tire up to 40 pounds. The next one is B, and we're going to go ahead and check the brakes and make sure that the handle moves freely. And we're going to look down here at the caliper and make sure it's moving also. Murph, the next one is C, and C stands for cranks. The crank attaches the pedals, the crank comes up here, and the chain wraps itself around the crank. We're also going to check the chain and the cog. So we've got the cog back here and the chain. The chain attacks to the front sprocket and goes to the rear and it helps when you move the pedals, it moves the tire. Murph, after you've checked those things, you're good to go. Hey everybody, this is my new friend Griffin. Hi Griffin. Hi, 
Hi, um, how you doing, Murphy? I'm doing great. I, I was wondering something, Griffin. What grade are you in now? I'm in third. Third grade, awesome. Are you excited about summer? Yeah, and oh. can I tell you the things that I want to do? Oh, absolutely. So tell me some of the things you want to do this summer. Well, I want to go to the beach with my cousins. Yeah, oh, and... have fun with your cousins. Do you ever play flashlight tag with your cousins? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun. What else? And I want to ride my bike for cousins. Oh. Ride my bike with my cousins. Ride your bike with your cousins? That sounds like a lot of fun. And, and what is that helmet have you got on? Is that for your bike? Yes, it's for my bike. Even when you're, um, even if you're an experienced trainer, you need a bike. And um, there's a couple other things. Uh -huh. For you need a helmet, like if you crash into something, you're going to need this hard helmet. Because if you didn't have this helmet and you crashed and you bumped your head on like a concrete. Oh, no. That would be bad. Bad, yeah. Yeah, that would be bad. You are so smart to wear a helmet, even though you are an experienced bike rider. Yeah, do you ride in your neighborhood? Yeah. Uh, have you ever ridden at the Greenway? Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for coming and talking with us today. Well, I hope you have a great summer and be safe. Be safe, that's right, everybody. Wear your helmet, right? Yes. Right, all right. Oh, that was so fun, and I had so much fun talking to Griffin, and I sure learned a lot. You sure did, Murph, <laughs> and I saw you riding your bike without your training wheel. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Oh, thank you for helping me remember all the things I can do. You're welcome, Murph. And you can remind yourself of this when you start to learn something new next time. Yeah! Oh, that's cool. You know, John, mm -hmm. you know, earlier today, there were some guys making fun of me and, and saying, ah, rabbits can't ride bikes. Oh, that's not very nice, Murph. How did that make you feel? Oh, sad and mad. Well, I understand. But it's important to remember that you can't let them discourage you from doing something new. Yeah, we can't let what they say do that. No, no, no. That's right. You know, that reminds me of a story I heard recently. Yeah, a story? Oh, yeah. I like stories. Okay, let's listen while Miss Nancy reads. Oh, okay. Hey, guys, you listen too. Once upon a time, there was a happy little flower named Blossom. She was brightly colored, beautiful, and very useful. Blossom lived in a neighborhood like yours, in the yard of a family with children, a kitty, and a vegetable garden. Blossom was very friendly and liked to wave at everyone. She would wave her head and leaves at the children who would run laughing past her or have a tea party right beside her. She waved at the kitty who would come and nap with her on warm sunny afternoons. And she tried to wave at the vegetables in the garden but the vegetables would never wave back. As a matter of fact, not only would the vegetables not wave at Blossom, they began to say mean and ugly things to her too. What did they say? I'll tell you. You're nothing but a dumb old flower. Nobody cares about you. You're not important. All people can do is look at you. Vegetables are much more important than flowers. The whole world loves vegetables. Without us, people would be hungry. What would everybody eat? Flowers? <laughs> when poor little Blossom heard all the mean things the vegetables were saying, her head began to droop. Her leaves looked wilted. She felt sad. What do you think? Was what the vegetables said true? Was it kind? Should Blossom listen to them? Slowly, Blossom raised her head and looked around. A little honeybee landed on her and gathered some nectar to help make honey. Honey, honey. Blossom began to get excited. Bees gather nectar from flowers to make honey. Honey feeds bees and honey feeds people. Also, bees gather pollen on their legs and pollen helps make baby vegetables grow. Without flowers, what would the bees eat? The leaves of some flowers are used in salads. Flowers help people eat healthy. And yes, flowers are beautiful to look at and many smell very pretty. 
people make perfume from flowers. That gives people jobs. So, yeah, flowers are pretty to look at. They make people happy, and that is a good thing. But flowers do so much more. So I ask you again, should Blossom listen to the vegetables? No, she should not care it at all. Don't listen when others try to squash you. Don't potato them any attention. Just bloom, my dear ones. Just bloom and wave and be happy. The end. Oh, that was a great story. Did you really like it, Murph? Oh, I did, I did. You know, I think Blossom should turn up her nose to those mean <laughs> veggies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And not let what they say tomato to her too much. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Judd. Yeah. Tomato too much. <laughs> so what do you want to do now, Murph? Oh, uh, you know, whew, I'm kind of hungry after that bike rodeo and story. Yeah, I could definitely use a snack. Hey, 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 you know what? I've got the perfect snack to make. Crusty really? critters. Crusty critters? Why do you call them that? Oh, you'll see. You ready? You ready to get it? I am. Okay. Right. Wow, Murph, I see a lot of fruit and bread. So what all do we need? Okay. Well, we need the bread. Right. And we need peanut butter. Right. Hazelnut chocolate spread. Ooh, yum. Blueberries. Yes. Banana. Good. And a knife, just a table knife, not a sharp knife. Right. Okay. 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 What, what do we do and, first? And we're gonna use a little cutting board right there. Right. Okay. 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 Well, first we're gonna take our banana. Okay. We're gonna peel the banana. All right. Okay. Keep a peeling there. Okay. And then we're gonna slice. Oh, I don't know, four, five, six slices. Okay. One, two, three. Four, five, yeah, we'll do six just in case. Okay, now you can put your banana aside there. Okay, I'll put the banana yeah. over here. Okay. Now take two of the banana slices. Okay, And okay. cut them in half. All right, cut that one. And we'll cut that one. All right. Excellent, excellent. Okay, now we're going to take our hazelnut chocolate spread. Okay. And open it up. Yeah. Hey, don't put your fingers in there. Uh, all right. And get a knife. Yes and spread it on one of the pieces of bread. And you know what? What? If you had an adult around, you could do this on toast too. Oh, that would be good, Mark. Spread it all over. Keep spreading it all over. Get, get all on the edges. Mm. Gotta get in. Yeah, get on the edges there. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I think we've got it all covered now. Okay, now then take two of your little halves and you're gonna make ears and you're gonna put them about halfway down the piece of bread. That's it exactly. Right there. Uh -huh. You're making ear. ears for our crusty critter. Okay, I can't okay. wait to see what this critter is gonna be. Now take two blueberries over there. And by the way, you always rinse your fruit. I already rinsed those blueberries. Oh, that's good, Murph. And you're gonna make eyes. Okay. Put them where you think eyes would be. Ah, so let's put them right here. Okay. Yes. And now take the other Banana that's cut in half. Okay. And you're gonna make a mouth. You're gonna put one right under there. Yeah. And one on top. All right. You, you didn't leave yourself enough room, dude. I'll scoot it down, so I'll be right. There you go. There you go. There we go. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, look at that, Murph. What do you think that looks like, dude? I think that looks like a monkey. It does look like a monkey. Oh, that's great, Murph. Isn't that cute? It is cute. Yeah, I, I want to eat it now. Yeah. Okay, just, Let's just make say. our other one for uh, next. Okay. Okay. One for me. One for you. That's right? right. Okay. So scoop that one out of the way. Okay. And now, put the top back on the hazelnut chocolate spread. All right. Get it out of the way. Yep. This time we're gonna use yummy peanut butter. Ooh, that'll be good, Murph. Okay. Always make sure that nobody has any peanut allergies before right. serving this. That's right. Absolutely. Same thing goes with the other one too. Yeah. Right. Okay, now you're gonna spread your peanut butter all over. All right. Yum, 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 yum. Yummy, creamy peanut butter. And very high in protein. That's right. Very, very important nutrition. Very good for you. Yeah. All right, I think we've got it covered all the way, Murph. Okay, the next job is to take two of the banana slices. Okay. And put them at the top of the piece of bread, kind of like ears. Okay, and one yeah. ear there and oh, one ear there. Oh, that's perfect. There we now go. put one in the center for our nose. Okay. Kind of get yeah, down a little bit. There's there you his go. nose right there. Yeah, and put a blueberry smack dab in the middle. Smack dab in the middle of the banana? Yeah, yeah, the nose. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, there dude. There we go. And now put two blueberries as eyes. Okay, let's get, get, get blueberries for his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of close together. One eye yeah. there and one eye there. 
Yeah. Hey. Oh, look at that. You know what? what? That looks like those Andean bears that we saw at the Nashville Zoo. Oh, dude, exactly. It does. It one looks like a bear and one looks like a monkey. That's right. I'm not going to eat the bear. You can have the monkey. Okay. <laughs> that the sounds good. The you, dude. Ah, oh, thanks. I like the <laughs> yum, 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 chocolate yum, yum, hazelnut yum, yum. spread. You know, Murph, these crusty critters remind me of our friends at the Nashville Zoo. Oh, I know, right? Oh, I can't wait to go back there. I got an idea. While we eat our snacks, let's show our friends one of the animals we visited last time we were there. Great idea, Murph. Which one? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Hey, guys, check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, everybody. I am so excited because I am at the Nashville Zoo at Grasmere with an extraordinary guy, Mr. Jason. Hi, Mr. Jason. Hi, Murph. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. And what are you? Are you one of the zookeepers? I am. I'm one of the rhino keepers here at the Nashville Zoo. So we have four rhinos four. and I take care of all of them. Four rhinos? Wow, that is so cool. What, what, what is the plural of rhino? Rhinoceros, rhinoceros. is the same as rhinoceros. Just the same Whether as rhinoceros. That's so one awesome. One or four. But they live in groups called a crash. A crash? A crash of rhinos. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of neat. And then they live in that group. Well, I want to learn all you can tell us about rhinos today. So take it all right, so we have four southern white rhinos here at the Nashville Zoo. Uh, white rhinos are one of five species of rhino on the planet. They come from Africa along with the black rhino. And then there's three Asian species, the greater one-horned, the Sumatran, and the Javan. We have four females. Uh, they're right around four and a half years old. So they're still essentially babies. Uh, they are, they'll, when they get to be full grown, they'll be about 4,000 pounds. Whoa. Very big animals. Yeah. And boy rhinos get up to 6,000 pounds. So Whoa. they are the second largest animal, land mammal behind an elephant. Uh, so our four girls, we have Nandi, Norma, Casey, and Modwani. Uh, they're just like big puppy dogs. They, uh, they love their scratches. They, they, they love eating grass. Um, and actually, they're the only species of rhino that strictly eats grass. All the other rhinos are called browsers, which means they, they eat tree branches. Uh, and they have a specialized lip for that, just like the white rhino has a specialized lip for eating grass. So they have a big, wide lip up, up top, and it helps them mow the grass, just like a lawnmower. They are herbivores, which means they only eat plant products, uh, and white rhinos specifically just eat grass. But here at the zoo, we can't keep them on grass all the time, so we give them uh, hay. It's called uh, coastal hay. And then they get a specialized herbivore grain. Um, so they get about 21, 22 pounds of grain and about 100 pounds of hay each day. Um, it's pretty impressive that an animal that big only eats vegetables. Oh, that's kind of like me. Except maybe not that much, Mr. Jason. That's a lot for you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So you said they're all four girls. That's correct. They are all females, and we're hoping within the next couple months to get a boy rhino. Oh, that and would be cool. And then we can make some baby rhinos. Yeah, that would be fun that we'd have little baby rhinos to come visit. Well, kind of little baby rhinos. Well, they're actually about 150 pounds when they're born, so they're big babies. Oh, those are some big babies. That is so cool. Are, are they related to elephants because they're so big? No, actually they're related to horses. Horses and tapers are our cousins to the rhino. Wait a minute. I would never have guessed that. Can they run fast like horses? They can. They can run about 35 miles an hour. Wow, that is awesome. And oh they're my goodness. Very quick and very agile for being 4,000 pounds. Are they, they smart animals? They are. They're a lot smarter than people give them credit for. Whoa, and, and do they know their keepers? They absolutely do. They know us by our, our smell uh -huh. and by the sound of our keys right? and our voices. Wow, that is awesome. Now, do they like to sleep during the day or are they busy during the day or what? So generally during the hot part of the day, they'll uh -huh. sleep, find a shady spot to sleep. Oh, oh sounds like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But their favorite thing to do is roll around in the mud. Oh, yeah, take a good old mud. That's like going to the spa these days, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So they, they can... get that, they roll around in that mud, and uh -huh. when it does, it covers up their skin. Right. And it acts as sunscreen. Whoa. And it protects them from biting insects like uh -huh. flies and mosquitoes. 
always important to wear sunscreen. Yep, and it also conditions their skin. Whoa. It's like a mud mask. Now, do you have a favorite rhino back there? Well, I love them all, uh -huh. but I kind of like Nandi a little bit better than the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like you kind of like me, Best John. Right, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Can you think of anything else that we should know about the rhinos at the Nashville Zoo? Absolutely. Actually, so rhinos are in very endangered because Aww. they're hunted by people. Oh, that's not good. And they're hunted for those horns on their head. No, that's just silly. It is. It doesn't make any sense, but a lot of people really want that horn uh. and they think it's got magical power. Hours. Hey guys, not cool. Not cool Let's at all. Let's not hunt the rhinos. Okay. That, actually, their horn is made of the exact same material as our fingernails. You're kidding. It's called keratin. Keratin, and that's not carrots like I would eat. Nope, no, not no, carrots no, like no, that. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, well that is, it's been great talking with you, Mr. Jason. It's been good talking to you, Murph. And remember, check out the rhinos at the Nashville Zoo. Yeah! <laughs> I loved learning about the white rhinos, John. I know, but it makes me sad to know that they're endangered. Oh, me too. I wish there were something we could do. Well, there are things we can do. The first thing is to care, and you care about them. Yeah! The next thing is to share. You share the info that you know about them. Hey, maybe next school year you can do a report about the white rhinos and show pictures of them so that kids will know what they look like. Yeah, those are great ideas, John. I guess that's one of the reasons it's so important to support places like our Nashville Zoo. Exactly. You know, Murph, we're lucky to live in a country with wonderful zoos and places to learn. And speaking of our country, what's with all the red, white, and blue? It's not the 4th of July. Oh, John, we rabbits celebrate with red, white, and blue all summer. You know, first there's Memorial Day in May, and right. then June has Flag Day. That's right. June 14th is Flag Day. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to hear some cool things about our flag? Sure, Murph. Okay. Here are just a few fun facts. Our first flag was designed by Betsy Ross, who, you know what? She what? made clothes for President George Washington. That's right. And the 13 white and red stripes on our flag represent the original 13 colonies before we were even an independent country. Wow. Yeah, and there is one star for each state in our country. You know how many stars that is? How many, Murph? Oh, 50. 50 stars for 50 states. And, and you, know, you know, John, there are many rules about the proper way to raise and lower the flag and how or where it should hang and all that stuff. And how to fold it, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And last but not least, our Pledge of Allegiance was written in 1892. There you go. Those are some cool facts, Murph. Oh, thanks, dude. But you know, our time's almost up today. Ah, oh, boy, oh boy, we have had a great show. We sure have, Murph. You've learned that you can ride a bike. And more importantly, that I can learn new things. Right. And the story of Blossom reminds us to be ourselves yeah. and believe in ourselves. Oh, and not to let the mean words of others to matter to us too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Murph. And I learned how to make a great zoo animal snack. Oh, you mean the crusty critters? Yeah! That's right, the crusty and critters. we are lucky to live in a country with such great zoos and people working hard to protect the animals, especially rabbits, guys. <laughs> You're right, Murph. We do live in a great country. Hey, do you know the Pledge of Allegiance? Well, well I sure do. Why? Why don't we say that to close out the show today? Oh, that would be a great way to finish the show. Hey, everybody, we invite you to say it with us. Yeah, say it with us. Okay. All right. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was great, Murph, except yeah. for one little thing. Wait, wait, wait. It's indivisible, not invisible. Invisible. No, it's not invisible. It's invisible. No, it's not invisible. You know, you don't think so? No. Like, like a superpower. No. Yeah. Bye-bye. 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 We love you. We love you here at the borough. Remember to dream big and work hard. Yeah, yeah, and all that good stuff. Okay, it's a wrap. I'm out of here. Where's my producer? Where's my director? I want my carrot juice. Come on. Oh, hey, hey, guys. Come on, come on. Who's the star around here? Uh, would you like to peel me a grape? Yeah.